hello and welcome to my Succession Witch PvP guide for late 2023. The first parts of the video will be a bit beginner focused. I will go over each of the different skill choices and basically tell you what to spec into. After that I will talk about what distinguishes a Succession Witch from a Succession Wizard. Then later I will show you how to rotate your super armors and how to do protected movement on this class followed by some basic quote-unquote combos and my personal take on the playstyle of a succession witch. And at the end I will give you guys some gearing advice, including crystals, add-ons and all that stuff. Uh, starting off with the iconic multiple magic arrows or MMA for short. Um, you just uh, take this and what it actually does we will discuss a bit later. Next up is prime earth arrows. You also take it um, it is a bit overlooked in my opinion. In most guides it's referred as a filler skill, um, but it actually is a really good catch because of the stiffen. It does decent damage actually and has a down attack and also a magic, a minus magic DP debuff. For your fireball skills, um, the prime fireball itself it's not really used anymore. It does little to no damage. I mean, it is a stiffen, um, but I'd much rather use Earth Arrow than Fireball to catch someone. Um, the flow of the skill is the Prime Fireball Explosion. There are two versions. There is the uh, Aerial and the Spread one. The uh, Only the Aerial has a knockdown, so you want to take the knockdown for PvP. Um, although the Spread one has super armor you you really want to have the knockdown because otherwise you are just uh, lacking cc's continuing with the meteor actually both versions are viable in pvp just under different circumstances the main difference between the two is that the aerial one has a knockdown whereas the focus one doesn't both have a frontal guard during the casting animation of the skill but the aerial one loses the frontal guard during skill execution. The aerial one also takes much longer to cast and has a longer cooldown. I'll show you the aerial one first. As you can see, long casting animation, we still have a frontal guard and if we release the skill we lose the frontal guard. The area where you can CC people is really big. It's by far your longest ranging skill and longest range CC and um, the area where you can CC people goes even farther beyond that because the splash damage of the meteor goes a bit further. So you can almost CC people out of render distance. Now for the focus meteor it uh, looks like this. Really fast and keeps its frontal guard. So generally speaking you want to take the Focus Meteor in 1v1s and small scale and the Aerial Meteor in large scale because it's a really good pre-engage CC. Uh, next up are your Lightning skills. Um, lightning Chain you basically never use in PvP. It uh, has a really long casting animation. It takes forever for the Stiffen to tick and it is unprotected uh, as you can see. So I'll just uh, just lock it and forget that it exists. As for the flow of the skill, you really want to take the first version. Now, because Succession Witch has no S block or Q block, you can mitigate this by using this skill. You can either choose to uh, cast the skill via key inputs or you can put it on the hotbar. If you cast it via skill inputs, uh, you can just hold it and rotate uh, the frontal guard as such. If you use it via a hotkey, you have to press it and then press right mouse button. And then you can also rotate the skill and release it on command. Sadly, the skill auto-releases after about 30% of your stamina is gone. The other nice thing about the skill is that it applies a shocking effect. Now you have this shocking effect on numerous different skills and what it does is that it 
applies a movement speed, casting speed, and attack speed debuff to your enemies. When people talk about witch and wizard slows, they generally mean this shock effect that you have on multiple skills. Moving on, we have the prime lightning. This is your stun, which directly flows into the next skill that we're gonna spec, the residual lightning combo. We take the combo instead of the high voltage because it has super armor, which looks like this. Also worth mentioning is that the residual lightning um, applies a shock effect and goes really, really far. So even if you uh, cannot hit this guy with your fireball anymore, uh, he's still in the range for residual lightning. Um, moving on with a freeze. I really rarely use this in large scale. Um, maybe when I'm shy buffed and speed spared and I run out of all other things to cast, then I throw in a freeze together with the second attack. Mm, but other than that, I don't really use this skill. Next up is your frigid fog. Now, um, you definitely want to take the first version because it is a range uh, spell with frontal guard and down attack. So this is really useful for dealing a lot of ranged damage. As for the blizzard, most people now take the domain version instead of the storm version because it got buffed a while ago and now deals massive damage. Um, it looks like this. You have frontal guard which you can also mouse move. Uh, moving down to your Earthquake and Earth Response skills, here you want to take the Earthquake Evade and the Earth Response Destruction. This is basically all your protected movements. We will talk about protected movements a bit later in the guide. The Magnus skill of Succession Witch is pretty useful, it has a super armor, it has a DP self buff and also nice down attack damage. Um, I basically use it when, as a panic button when I want to try to stay in super armor, uh, look around, uh, wait for my TP to come off cooldown or whatever. Part of your super armor rotation. Now this one right here is your E buff. Um, it can only be used via a quick slot. It is useful in both capped and uncapped because of the ca cast speed and the accuracy rating. Now down here you either choose between specking into Bolite or Voltaic and between Aqua Jail and Equilibrium Break. For Bolite and Voltaic both have super armor, both have a bound CC. The only real difference is that Bolite is more range focused and Voltaic is more melee focused. Um, as such, Bolet also has a longer casting animation, so it's not as easy to CC people with it than with uh, Voltaic, for example. I'll just quickly show you. Um, but, as I said, it's uh, range, and if you spec everything else into range, then I think you should get Bolet also. For Aqua Trail and Equilibrium Break, your trade-off is a Super Armor against a Frontal Guard. Both skills do little damage, although the Aqua Trail is useful when fighting evasion targets because it also has the evasion debuff and a high accuracy rating. Um, generally speaking, if you're doing large scale, you want to take these two. If you're doing small scale or dueling, you want to take the second ones. Um, whatever you do, make sure you either spec into Voltaic Pulse or Aqua Trail for the evasion debuff. Moving down to your secondary skills, you have here your two teleports and the newly added mass teleport. I would advise to pull these two on uh, uh, skilled cooldown slots and always keep an eye on them. Um, Try not to use both at once, so whatever you do, make sure you still have always one teleport ready for an emergency situation. 
Now I have to mention this, uh, when you cast teleport via the input uh, shift plus space, um, especially around stairs or anywhere you can climb up to, you will in 80% of the time get the climbing animation. And this is really, really frustrating, especially if you try to escape with it. Um, you can, the only thing you can really do is put the first teleport on a hotkey and then use the teleport uh, that way, um, so you don't get the animation. The sad part is that the second teleport you can't put on a hotkey and you uh, will have to use it via the input. As for the arch wizard uh, mass teleport, um, basically what you can do is you can port uh, up to three or four teammates uh, that are standing around you, uh, with you somewhere. Um, the only thing I really use this in Node War is to uh, disengage from a base. So if someone calls for a respawn or something like that, or I'm really low health, I'll just uh, press it and then uh, pot out of the enemy base. And uh, potentially you can also take some of your teammates with you and save them. A uh, dagger step you used to lock it, but now you can also unlock it. You can't uh, activate it anymore with F because your Magnus skill will get out. Uh, just uh, forget that it exists. Um, concerning your magical shield, this is a controversial topic. Some witches play with it, some play without it. Personally, I don't use it and I keep it locked. Um, what it does is it takes away some of your damage and rather than subtracting it from your HP, it subtracts it from your mana. And in most situations, when you are not careful, you will stand there without mana like an idiot and can't cast any spells anymore. So I keep it locked because I don't want to um, accidentally activate it when casting PA. Next up is mana absorption. It can be activated with space after pretty much any skill. Um, what it does is it gives you a frontal guard, a really long frontal guard, and it also gives you back some mana. And if you hit someone with it, you get even more mana back and you can also slow him. It is really useful when you are kiting and you need a frontal guard. Next up is speed spell, your most important pre-buff. It gives yourself and your allies movement and attack and cast speed. So put it on a quick slot and use it when it's ready. Uh, preferably when there are teammates around you, not only for yourself. Right next to each other are both your main healing skills. Uh, the first one is activated by pressing E. It will heal yourself and also uh, any uh, allies you are aiming at. Uh, the first one scales with your HP, so if you have higher HP, you will heal more. The second one is activated by pressing Shift and E. It will heal multiple allies around you, um, but all but only a fixed amount. Um, it is important to note that both are unprotected, so be smart about them. Don't run into an engage and expect not to get the seed. Next up is your protective area, short PA. Um, use it when the shot caller calls for it or when you are about to engage or when you are getting engaged. It gives you 50% to all DR. Uh, next up is your blue orb and your red orb. The red orb you basically don't use in PvP. The blue orb is nice to have out because it gives you movement speed and also passive MP recovery. And unless you die, this buff is kept up for 10 minutes. Or unprotected dash. You can dash two times to the left, uh, right and also backwards. Um, it is really useful for kiting in 1v1s. In large scale I would refrain from using it too much. In large scale you pretty much only use uh, your protective movement to move. 
don't forget to skill all your passives. Down here you might wanna lock rage transfer and put it on a separate quick slot uh, because sometimes it interferes with your Rabam skills with shift and X and then you accidentally cast rage transfer. Um, the Nova skill I mainly run uh, melee DP um, but for capped content I run magic evasion. As for Rabams, there isn't really much choice. I would suggest everyone to use the Rabam heal. Um, <clears throat> sometimes you can even pull it off during combat uh, when no one's focusing you because it is so quick to cast and you can save your teammates. And next up is uh, Swift Earthquake. I have it on the hotbar, but uh, in most situations where I used to use this skill, I now use our Magnus skill instead. And it basically is a last resort super armor. As for your third Rabam, both versions are not really useful in PvP or at all. Um, you could maybe argue to use mana arrows um, from hotbar when you need a frontal guard, but um, your normal mana absorb just works fine. So forget about it. Coming this far, you might be wondering, hey, isn't this everything my succession wizard can do? Where's the difference? Actually, there are two main differences, namely Spell Storage and MMA. Let's start with MMA. If I cast the spell normally, it looks like this, nothing really special. But depending on the spell you casted previously, you could have four different outcomes. If I for example cast a Fireball and then MMA after that, we will get an AoE fire attack that also does down attack damage. Next up, we will check out the Ice attack. If I cast an Ice skill and right after that MMA, we get these Ice spears that po could potentially do a down smash. Next up is Lightning. Now, previously, Lightning uh, did the most damage because it went out so fast and had extra uh, attacks on it. But now, all of them do the same damage. And lastly, we have the Earth version, where if you cast it right after an Earth spear, uh, skill, you get a frontal guard. Now, what makes Succession Witch gameplay different from Wizard is that, depending on the situation, you can weave in these MMA attacks. Uh, the most notable mention is when you are doing structure damage to a base, you want after your fire skills cast the AoE fire damage because it does AoE damage. The second notable mention is that in your combo after your frigid fog if you cast multiple magic arrows you could potentially get a down smash which in turn uh, keeps your opponent on the ground for longer. Apart from these two situations I would not advised to use the MMA much in large scale because it is unprotected. Apart of course from the frontal guard after the earth skills. But in my opinion uh, whenever you could use the MMA you can also use your mana absorption which has a way longer frontal guard. So if you like me and have played Succession Wizard in the past you might be wondering what the fuck is spell storage because the skill description of Elemental Flow is a bit iffy, to say the least. And it took me actually quite some time to figure out what the fuck is going on. So basically, most skills, not most, but a lot of skills where you have a casting bar, you can cancel out of this by using Magical Evasion. Uh, looks like this. Now, what happened there is... Um, your character does the wind-up animation for the skill, then you use 
Magical Evasion, which puts the skill in spell storage, and when you come out of Magical Evasion, you instacast the skill. This is the simple version. It gets a bit more confusing when you don't leave Magical Evasion immediately, but you cast other skills in between. Now, watch this. What I did just now was precast my Meteor, put it into spell storage with Magical Evasion, used Earth Response in between, and then right after that I used Magical Evasion again and the Meteor was still in spell storage. You not only can do this with Earth's Response, but also with your Ra Bombs, for example, which looks crazy. Now, you might be wondering, what use does this have? Not much, to be honest. It used to be great in 1v1s, because you could do some crazy shit with it, but unfortunately, Magical Evasion, which used to be Super Armor, is now unprotected. So the only real use you are gonna get out of this is when you cast, when you precast Meteor, and then you see Oh no, I'm too far away, the enemy rate has positioned differently, they are coming from a different direction, I don't know. You can reposition yourself infinitely and you don't have to wait for, you don't lose your meteor, so to say. Uh, other than that, I would frankly forget about spell storage. Now let's talk a bit about super armor rotations. What is a super armor rotation? It is a set of skills that you cast one after another that allow you to stay in super armor without any gaps. This is especially important for Succession Witch as we do not have an S-block nor a Q-block and we will always have to be on the move to not get CC'd. In my opinion this is the most important part that you should learn first when picking up Succession Witch. A lot of new players I see are standing somewhere in the middle of the field casting skills and not moving an inch. This will get you focused and killed. The most important skill for your super armor rotation is Earth's response. It will move you to the left or right side by pressing either A or D and left mouse button. And the really cool thing about this skill is that it its super armor lingers extremely long and it also has an extremely short cooldown. Your second most important skill is Earthquake. It will propel your character opposite to the camera direction. You can use this to disengage away from something and if you turn your camera quick enough you can also use this to engage towards something. It is also your most important movement skill as it allows you to move down from a high ground without getting a falling animation and while staying also in super armor. Pretty neat. Combining these two skills together you already have a huge part of your super armor rotation figured out and now you can also reposition yourself protectively. To bypass the long cooldown of Earthquake, we now start to introduce two different super armor skills. Namely, Bolet and Aqua Trail. Combining all these four skills together with one of your teleports can keep you protected forever.
if you are experienced enough, you can use your aqua chair to explicitly debuff someone and your bolite to do chip damage. And also maybe you will get a lucky CC. Now chances are that you will fat finger something. And in such a case you can always use your Magnus skill as a last resort. If for some reason your Magnus skill is also on cooldown, you can use your swift earthquake rubber. This will give you enough time for something else to come off cooldown. While staying in super armor is great for not getting CC'd, it won't help you against grabs or straight up damage in your face. For such cases you have your second teleport. If you do your normal super armor rotation and protected movement, you use already one of your teleports quite frequently. And if you see a grab class rushing towards you, you just use your second teleport to get away. Once you are a bit more experienced, you can use your frontal guards to absorb some of the incoming damage. This will help you stay alive significantly longer. Your most important frontal guard is mana absorb. Simply activate it by pressing space. Second to that is your frigid, which you can use to also do some range poke damage. And then there is also blizzard, which does huge AoE damage. And you can also move the frontal guard of the skill. So let's talk a bit about some combos you can do. First up, I'm not a duelist or some kind of expert on 1v1s. I mainly do Nold Wars and Red Battlefield as PvP content and as such this is also reflected in the combos that I will give you. So with the skills I told you guys earlier to spec into, we essentially got 4 hard CCs and a bunch of different stiffens that you will use for catches. First up we've got two knockdowns, one from your Meteor, ignore the stiffness parts, we are interested in the knockdown. The second knockdown is from your fireball explosion. Then we got your one and only stun from lightning. And then we have lastly, but certainly not least importantly, your bound from bolite. This is the core skill of your kit and we will build all of our combos around it. For catching people we have our earth arrow, our normal fireball and our earthquake, which are all stiffen. Our most basic bread and butter double grounding CC range combo will look like this. Now, what did we do? First up, our initial CC was Bolite, which is a bound. Then we used Frigid Fog for additional damage. We re it with Fireball Explosion and then we casted our Lightning Combo for extra damage. If you are not slowed, have enough casting speeds and high enough FPS, you can weave in a few more skills to do extra damage. This can look something like this. Your additional range damage mainly comes from two skills, multiple magic arrows and earth arrow. With a cooldown of 4 seconds and 3 seconds, these two skills can come quite in handy. A lot of times your initial CC might come from Meteor. In such cases you are probably too far away for any of your skills to reach and you have to get in close first to follow up on that. In this situation I will teleport in, try to re -CC straight away with Fireball Explosion if the situation allows it and then I will cast a super armor rotation and try to get out again. Let's talk a bit about catching people. As I've said before, 
Bolite is really slow and getting an initial CC with it rather hard. So what you will do most of the time is trying to get a quick stiffen and follow that up by a grounding CC. Um, because how the CC counter works is that even if you stiff someone followed by a grounding CC, you still have enough room for a re-CC. Which means that the earlier range combo that I showed you guys still works even if you catch someone with a stiffen first. Sometimes when you are kiting and trying to fish for CCs, you might hit a lucky stun. Now normally hitting a stun means that you have a small window where you can do some nice back attack damage and then re-CCing your opponent with a grounding CC. As a succession witch and wizard, you more often than not are far away from the opponent that you stunned and you really don't have time to teleport behind him and do anything else. So the most important thing is that you recognize that you hit the stun and that you follow it up with a grounding CC and then you have got more time to do additional damage. If you've been playing Suck Witch for a while or if you try out some of my combos in RPF you might have noticed that it is actually really hard to one combo people. Part of the reason is that specking into the ranged skills I showed you does not give you the most DPS output possible. Another issue is that in group fights especially once you CC someone, you might not have another follow-up CC ready. Now, listen carefully, here's an important piece of advice. Don't worry about it. You are not a bad player if you cannot one-combo people. You are not an assassin class, it is not expected of you. If you are smart enough with your teleports and your movement, you can chip away at an enemy one skill at a time. Your job in general is to do AOE damage to enemy raids and structures, heal your allies and if you are experienced enough you can pull off some pretty nice pre-engage CCs. To conclude the guide, let's talk a bit about gearing. Firstly, let's address the elephant in the room, accuracy, or rather the lack thereof. As many of you guys know, Succession Witch has very little modifiers on her skills, ranging from 10% to a whopping 0%. It is because of this that the most frequent question I get asked is how much accuracy do I need? This is in my opinion a philosophical question that you can even answer yourself. How much accuracy you need depends on what opponents you want to be able to kill. Without trying to be sarcastic, it is a very valid option to just go full AP and only focusing on DR targets. In such a case, I would advise you to turn off the miss effect and saying to yourself, oh, if I can't kill this person, it just means that I have too little AP. In such a case, you will have a great time when fighting rangers, archers or other witches and wizards. A really tanky Drakania, Valk or Serka will still screw you over but you can get around that by stacking even more AP. Now the problem with that approach is that even the most cringe 1100 hybrid build will fuck you over. My personal goal has always been to broaden the range of builds that I am able to kill and as such it was unavoidable to invest into some accuracy gear. Now you will never be able to kill meme builds. You are not a sage, you are not on the awakening spec, just forget about it. But if you stack enough accuracy without sacrificing m too much AP, you will be able to kill most of the hybrid builds. As such, my personal advice is that after you hit the 309 bracket, you start investing in some accuracy gear. Now let's have a look at some crystals for capped and uncapped PvP content. If you have watched some of my montages, you will notice that I have a very aggressive playstyle. This is also reflected in the crystals I use. 
the only defensive crystals I have are the special attack evasion crystals together with the new Hata A tier. Other than that, I run human damage with ignore resistance. For capped PvP content, I will put my Karmov in the description where all my builds and crystals and buffs are linked. But let's just go quickly over each of the tiers. For tier 1 and 2, you can swap out a lot of HP and AP for utility, such as jump height, ignore siege weapon resistance, and additional cast speed and HP recovery on hit. For T3s in particular, you want to stack as much HP as possible. This will get you really tanky. For tier 4 node wars, you will still want to stack HP, but now you will also have to build ignore resistance again. For light stones and artifacts, I use magical accuracy together with the beatdown set effect for pretty much every uncapped situation. For capped content, I just stack max HP. Congrats on making it this far. As a reward, I will give you a look into my add-ons. For uncapped, I use these ones. If you have watched the combo parts of the video, you might recognize three skills. Bolite, Fireball and Frigid Fog. Now, because I spam the shit out of Bolite, I always have attack cast speed and accuracy rating going. These two are, in my opinion, the most important add-ons that you should take. Continuing with the combo, I pretty much always follow up after the initial CC with Frigid Fog, which gives my opponents a debuff of DP and evasion. The re-CC with Fireball Explosion gives me extra damage in the form of human damage and critical hit rate. You definitely also want to take Meteor and Blizzard as additional add-ons, because these are your tier 3 add-ons. For Meteor I went with uh, damage over time and also bonus human damage, because this is most of the time my pre-engage. And for Blizzard I just uh, want that it hits the hardest it can by giving it critical hit rates and minus DP. The Earth Eruption, which is the Magnus skill, I only use defensively by giving myself plus 15 DP and uh, all opponents that it hits minus 10 AP. Adding that together with the 20 DP on the skill, you get like 45 DP over your opponent, which is quite huge. Looking at my capped add-ons, you will notice that I have swapped out all AP and minus DP add-ons for additional special attack damage and also more accuracy and minus evasion rate. If you think I went overboard with the add-ons on Blizzard, I advise you to try it out and thank me later. As for the Magnus skill, the same concept applies by buffing myself and debuffing the opponents. So that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching and have fun trying out the class. Making this guide has been very fun and uh, maybe I will do more stuff in the future. Have a good one.